Season one, Jeff, Barracuda, and the North American Sweethearts bring it home under the banner of Cognitive Pride. No one thought had a chance at the finals coming into this event. Coming as an number two. Oh, I'm a monster! I'm a self! Ripping through! Titan down, fall three! A double kill for self! It's Game a five minute! We're going to go for the win! It's a double kill! Champions, Cognitive Pride, GG! Season two, we say hello to Europe as adapting in Epsilon Esports, slam it home. A huge play, adapting's about to go up, he's gonna come crashing down, who's the target? It's gonna be all three, and two will get stunned out. Oh no. He's gonna take it tons of damage. Oh no. Chaos Force move forward. They don't have enough time for this. They don't have enough time for this. Down you go, it's a deicide. Ladies and gentlemen, Epsilon Esports. Season three. New name, same roster. Two-time world champions, Raffer and NRG. Well, there's four members left, and into the sky goes adapting. The ultimate way down. The Titan is under siege. Energy are looking to be world champions again. Long live the king. And once again, the king is Europe. Season four. Polar Bear Mike brings it back for America. E United slams the hammer. Cracking the knock back. There's the Walker controlling things. Panic can't take that wolf. See, where's the remainder of the team fight? That's one. But Adu and E United keeps on going because Panic can't two. Still pushing forward. They're at the Titan. Only two members to play defense. They can't do it. And that's the game. That's the series. That is your Spike World Championship. Say hello to your North American victors, Paula Bearbeck and EU United. Season five, new map, new players, new teams, same destination. Who raises Thor's hammer? The Smite Pro League. Good morning and welcome to Alfreda, Georgia. My name is Tom Battinger, joined here by Ryan Agro Bailey, and we are starting off our Spring Final Smite Masters live here from the studio. Really exciting to have all these teams here. Man, it's about time. We've been waiting for this what, for what feels like forever. I mean, the spring split really blew by, and in the last week uh, of preparation for everyone, it felt like it took an eternity. So excited that we finally get to kick it off here today. My biggest deal is that we've got all of the international squads here. Usually we wait until either the summer or even worse, going you know back years to Smite World Championship HRX style. This time around, we've got the international teams. So we have two teams from Europe and two teams from North America, but we have the squads that we normally only get to see at HRX, Brazil, Latin America, Oceania, and Southeast Asia as well. This time, you don't have to wait to HRX, but that is, of course, what we're leading up to. Yeah, this year it's going to be in November. We're partnering with DreamHack Atlanta. Very excited about that, and you got to come in and check this. This is going to be a huge event for us. It's going to be a ton of fun. We hope to see you there. I'm super excited for this because it's a push and pull. Well, we, we, we kind of lose that in inclusionary, insular experience. Now, all of a sudden, we're going to be around so many different teams and so many different players. You know, I got a chance to go out. You and I got a chance to go on to uh, uh, the Call of Duty World event at Atlanta and seeing different, you know, different cultures and different game communities mix and match is really, really fun. So that's going to be a big highlight of HRX for me this year uh, happening down there at, uh, at the World Congress Center. So going to be a lot of fun watching those teams but that of course that's november we'll get there when we get there right now is the culmination of the spring split north america and europe we've been showing those off throughout the course of the couple of weeks that we've just passed and well we've got the top two teams from there as well as a couple of teams from around the world yeah nocturnes gaming is going to be your latin america representative they defeated their opponents and now we're going to be up against e united in our second set of mm. today but even the first set, I think, is going to be fun to watch. How is Rival going to, to react to playing on LAN again after losing in the World Finals last year? And, and what what will Mashu Boys have up their sleeve? Mashu Boys from SEA. Dignitas versus Wegar and Servo, which is the Australian team. You might recognize Envisionize from High Res TV. And Space Station versus Kliz and the Black Dragons. Really exciting stuff. E United, as we mentioned, Nocturnes. So there's two regions of Latin America. Uh, Nocturnes is the 
ones that came out on top. Really fantastic Achilles play in that game number one, don't you think? Nocturne's just no surprise for me that they end up taking this victory. They've got so much land experience. They've got very talented players. And honestly, they might be the toughest international team to beat. United, despite being the world champions, mm -hmm. they've, they've got their work cut out for them. A lot of people are talking about Black Dragons. Kliz has obviously been a very popular player, and this team has come to Worlds almost every single year, if not every year, so a lot of, uh, a lot of traction behind them. But then going the other direction, like you said, uh, Smite Terror and the boys on Nocturnes, these guys are no slouches either. Today, we're going to start off with E United, the defending world champions, and they're going to be going up against Mashu, or excuse me, Rival, the runner-up at Worlds, and they're going to be going up against Mashu boys. We've been doing the, the Global Series. What can you tell us about Mashu? Well, they have, they're a team that I think is going to pull out something strange. That, it, that, that region seems to be very, very willing to go outside the box, you know, going a little bit different than a lot of what other regions are going to go for. Now, they do have two substitutes here. Two of their players, Shiz and the one noob, were not able to make it. That's ADC and Solo. Instead, it'll be Kamiru and Bill HK. So, you know, tough tough task already to go up against a team like Rival on an international stage. But when you factor in that they've got two players who are different, it's, it is their their side lane, so yeah. not, not as bad as it could be. You know, when you lose one of those 3v3 core members, it can be very difficult. Maybe one of them will have a great performance. I'm excited to see. I, I got to admit, watching the one noob over the last couple of weeks, I kind of wanted to see him Same. here. Uh, unfortunately, not going to see that. But Bill HK, not a slouch. Uh, he, he was playing on some of those other teams in that region, so coming here with the number one squad. Him and the rest of Mashi Boys and uh, Rival, we got a chance to talk to them a little bit earlier about their matchup. Let's listen to what the teams have to say. First of all, welcome to America, Mashu Boys. Thank you. Uh, big question before we get into the nitty gritty. Is this the first time you guys have been here? Of course, yes. This uh, is the first time that uh, I've been to High Res Studios for LEN. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is the first time to match up against NA and EU. So yeah. you guys have watched the league at home, obviously. Did you watch the, the World Championship? You know, Rival came in second. Here in the spring split, what's that like going up against Worlds runner-ups? It's pretty exciting to face up to what I believe is the number one team in Smite because <laughs> their composition and their teamwork is spot on. And uh, it's like a damage check for Southeast Asia on how far apart we are from NA, EU and Southeast Asia. So and with that said, how far do you think Southeast Asia, your region, is from NA or EU? I mean, we'll find out. <laughs> I have no idea. We'll, we'll, we'll see after the game. All right, so that's in between. That leads right to my next question. I mean, how confident are you guys coming into this rival matchup? Um, super I mean, exciting. Have no idea. My hands shaking. Yeah, we we'll just bring the SEA spice into it, I guess. The yeah. meme land. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are talking, you know, a little excited, maybe a little nervous. Are you guys going to be able to kind of dial that in? And do you think you're going to play your best today? It's sure. Uh, I, I mean, this is my first experience, so I'm not sure the. Uh, oh, so he's not yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if the if I'm comfortable in the environment. Yeah. Are you comfortable? Kinda, because I I already been through couples land though, but here's his first time. So, but I hope he could get into it quick. So yeah. So you mentioned Rival being the number two team. Is there anything specific that you guys are coming into this matchup thinking? Um, <laughs> just bring the spice in, <laughs> uh, yeah. be yourself, and pick the cards to be comfortable with. Yeah, I, I like that approach. I think trusting yourself and your team is, is probably the best way to go. <laughs> Without giving too much away, what can we expect out of Mashu Boys here in round one? Can we? Can we at least win <laughs> one game? <laughs> I mean, um, I, I believe that if we survive uh, the first few. Um, the early game and the mid game, I think we, we could stand a chance against Rival. So you think more late game than the Yeah. 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 All right. the... Sounds good. I mean, good luck to you guys. I'm sure you guys are going to do really strong. Is there anything that we didn't touch that you want to mention about either Mashu Boys or Rival? Uh, I would like to shout out to two of our members that couldn't make it for LEN. Uh, the one Noob and Shiz. Yeah, uh, they, they were the ones who uh, let us come to LEN. And uh, thanks for Bill and and Kamiru for subbing for Land. Yeah, and thanks for the sh thanks for the chance to let me go to Land too. Of course, well you guys earned it. Yeah. So uh, thanks, appreciate it. But it's all you guys. Thanks a lot, guys. You guys crushed it. Hmm. Ten points. Okay. All right, one. Great job, clear. Welcome in, guys. Thanks for uh, joining us here, Death Walker and Wolfie. 
Uh, are you guys just excited to be back on land? Is it? Do you got the old uh, the land jitters a little bit? No, well, not really. We're here just to destroy everybody and then go back home quick and easy, and that's pretty much it. Wow, that, that's simple. Uh, all right, well then let's start with your first matchup, uh, Mashu Boys. What are you expecting from them? Uh, well, we know what Mashu Boys are gonna pick, uh, so we know their drafts basically. We didn't really watch too many of their games, so we didn't go too deep into their strategies. We don't know if they have any pocket picks ready or anything. Uh, but we are pretty confident going up against them. Uh, we feel like we should be able to beat them, considering we've been uh, practicing against top EU teams. Uh, so yeah, we can handle. We can probably handle whatever the Mashu Boys throw at us, and uh, we're really looking forward to just uh, moving on to the semifinals, and where we expect to be playing EU United. Yeah, how excited are you to potentially be rematching against EU United after last year's World Final? Uh, well, playing against Team United again is going to be a great feeling. I think we just want to win against Team United more than anything for this LAN. Uh, winning against anyone really is satisfying on its own, but just considering United beat us at Worlds in the finals in a very, um, well... Fashion way. Fashionable <laughs> way. Uh, I think beating them here uh, is going to be quite a treat. New uh, new setup here at the uh, the new studios. You got your soundproof booths and that kind of stuff. You guys excited to uh, to play in that environment? Oh, definitely. Being able to just scream or being able to just talk really loud or call fire giants or gold furies and like the enemy team not being able to hear you is definitely an improvement. And I'm really excited to play in that environment. You guys last year were a very land centric team. Everyone talked about you as <laughs> not so good online, great at land. Now you've been great online so far. How do you keep up that LAN energy and keep that sort of ball rolling as well? Well, right now it's probably going to be inverted, right? Good online, bad at LAN. Well, uh, I think the main thing that we fixed, though, is uh, the way we practice online and the way we kind of just approach the online games. Because usually um, it would be top four or sometimes even top six teams that qualify for the LAN. So you really didn't have to put too much effort into qualifying. But right now when it's just top two, on top of that being two teams less, so it's six really good teams, you have to try really hard for every single set, like prepare really, really well for every single team, know their drafts in and out, know how they play. Uh, just good practice, really, I think, is the main difference and just the approach towards the games. I would say Ice is not garbage online. Or That's that. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and Wolfie, you've been saying you guys are just going to destroy everyone. What's uh, You got something planned for us that's going to let you do that? or just I'm just quick in, get in, play, I just do well, and that's pretty much it. I think it is confidence, <clears throat> though. You know, according to the gambler's script, Team oh. Rival ends up on top of this tournament. The oh. gambler is never wrong. And the gambler is never wrong. So Keep that in we mind. Don't, we don't even have to try. We, we, we already it's won. already written in stone. It's, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of surprised we actually had to bring everyone here. I thought it would be already. I mean, it's pre-recorded anyways, oh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's pretty much already over. All right, that does it. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Wolfie and Deathwalker, confident as always. And then ASU and Bill HK, the guys representing Mashu Boys over there. A little bit different of a tune, but what I hear from both of them, both squads there, is that uh, they're excited to play, and it's going to be an interesting set. Man, this is uh, as a player, this is what you play for, to come to land and have these sorts of opportunities, you know, especially for the side of Mashu Boys, to be able to come over to America and play in this sort of environment. I mean, I was excited to just go, you know, uh, to a different city that I'd never been to in the country, let alone, uh, let alone traveling internationally to come and play that's going to be a lot of fun uh, and, and how they'll be able to turn that around and be able to harness some of that energy that's what that's how teams end up being great land performers is taking that that excitedness that that energy that you get and actually turning it into something positive instead of letting it distract you all right so that jungler uh apologies for the entirety of the sgs i've been mispronouncing that guy's name it's uh, asu essentially Right, mm. not I I S E L like we've been saying. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that kind of makes sense, I suppose. That uh, whenever you said A S U, I was like, who is? I'm that? guessing that's the jungler because yeah. no one else that that wouldn't have made sense for anyone else. That uh, unfortunate. Well, here's a first look at our player booths right here. Uh, as we, as you guys know, brand new setup. <clears throat> that's why the uh, spring slip was a little bit late, but the land is not. And that's the important part here. So these guys already up in their soundproof boots. This is interesting. You know, the guys on Rival 
mentioned it was a really big positive and uh and you were a player yourself what 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 is this sort of how does this impact competition well i think that that wolfie brought up the big one right is that at land you're calling you're trying to like sneak an objective you know oh you distract a mid i'll, I'll go do gold fury that's more difficult at land because you know the enemy team could hear you could read your lips anything like that this is going to eliminate that but on the other side of the coin I do think it could hurt some teams in the in the energy that they bring. You know, uh, I'm thinking more on the console side of the dudes who like of to course. get loud and rowdy, but there are some PC players as well who like to get in your head and try and force you off your game, and that's easier when they can hear you. When, yes. You know, you could yell at them and, and tell them that you know what they're doing and all that kind of stuff. I, I'm interested to see how it's going to impact play. I think that we won't see an overall change by, by any stretch, especially on the PC side of things. I just think that... It, take some of the uh just another one of those crazy elements at LAN out of the picture well one of the things is so basically these these booths are are across from each other with giant glass windows so there is there's like a hallway that you walk in between we don't have a shot there but essentially you're not going to hear them but you certainly will see them yeah you will but the the monitors are blocking them so you know if sure. someone wants to stand up and give them a you know a <laughs> A pointer finger. I was going to say point at him, give him a finger, but a not, pointer the, finger. not the finger. No one's going to be given <laughs> the finger here or else Coop is going to come in and lay down the law. And that's absolutely true. Drop your uh, drop your Coop emote in the chat there. Coops. Rival with the first pick and, of course, the first ban on the left-hand side. They mentioned that they knew what Mashu Boys are going to play. Ban out the Achilles. Mashu Boys um, really into, like you said, kind of the, the oddball picks. A lot of Habwa in this region. A lot of uh, interesting burst stuff coming out, but Mashu Boy is going to ban out the Sirket. Interesting. Not I've seen a lot of Sirket bans overall as of late. She's kind of fallen off after some nerfs, but I feel like this is still a ban that is is what Mashu Boys want to take away is that Ice Ice Baby pressure. You want to mm. keep the jungler off of his comfort picks, and while he doesn't play a ton of Sirket, it has been shown, and, and, and Sirket's one of those gods that can just win the, win the game by herself. And speaking of Mashu Boys earlier, you guys heard it. They were like, look, we're we're not going to dance early in mid. That's not what our team is equipped to do. However, if we make it to the late game, then then we can sort of come back and, and fight into this one. Giving Rival the ability to set the pace of the game early and often is not what Mashu Boys want to do if that's their strategy. No, but at the same time, it kind of makes sense because Rival is a team that wants to play for the late game most of the time anyways. Despite sure. the, some, of their early, some of their compositions are kind of focused on early game control, but Rival is a team that likes to wait around and then find one big team fight in the mid to late game. Maybe Mashu Boys, and say, like, it, Rival can play keep away from the best teams in the world. You'll sure. watch Energy pick an early game composition and Rival will just dangle the, the carrot in front of their noses the entire game and then punch them whenever it's time <laughs> to go. So I don't think that trying to take it to Rival early is the call. I like Mashu Boys' strategy if that's what they are going to go for of let's let Rival dictate the pace and Maybe we can catch them off guard with something we're going to throw at them. So I think it's one thing to say to to allow the team to play their game. I think it's another thing. When I say dictate the pace, I, I'm imagining Ice Ice Baby going off and getting ahead with the lead, which is why I really like Mashu Boys, both bands here and the selection. So you get the Ice Ice Baby jungle ban and the Yana ban. They understand that you can't ban out characters that you don't want to play against these days, and it's just not really feasible. So you ban out strategies, and that that Sarket's going to be running all around the map, hyper mobile, going to get a lot of ganks, and the Yana's is going to enable that as well. And the Athena should cover up some of the issues. Exactly, Sarket and Yana's both excel in pick compositions that are trying to find uh, you know numbers in their favor. You alone in the jungle, and Ice Ice is a guy who would really prefer it seems to play a lot of those picks that are more team fight oriented yeah this is one of the ones that he prefers to, to do in a pick style composition i am worried for mashu boys the nemesis is left open though because nemesis can fill that same exact sort of role but i love taking athena away from kalas agni picks probably a little bit too early since rival already has the raw they probably could have gotten another pick in priority and then waited for the agni in that third side i like the agni because it kind of chases away the nemesis in theory Right, you can get rid of the shield with long range stun and you can dash away from her and slow be damned. Sure. So it's not a direct counter. I'm with you. I feel I, I feel your tone. I'm I'm with you there. But I think that if you pick the Agni second, you're sitting there going, The Nemesis won't be the ideal selection here. So we'll see where you go. Sure. Mashu boys wind up with the Robin to finish their first half. Also, Agni, one of the best mages in the game at applying divine ruin. It effectively yep. in the middle of a team fight because he's got so many different AOE skills 
you're not getting one big burst ultimate. You're getting three semi-burst ultimates in that rain fire. So you, you have an opportunity to spread Divine Ruin consistently, plus that combustion passive will keep it ticking a little bit longer. And uh, speaking of Agni, you know, another thing here is that Agni used to really struggle in the early game, and he's still no uh, king of levels one through five, but Mage's Blessing has helped him really get that flame wave online and allow him to do the dirty work before the meteors. So picking Agni into Ra isn't as terrible as it once was. No, I think that Agni, his pre-level five is now basically the same as everything else. So you're in a pretty good spot uh, it, as Agni right now at any point in the game. He's very strong. Touching back on, on, on Machu Boy's draft here, I, I, I think this is very smart. They they take the Athena from Kalos and they go the Agni, which I said kind of puts you in a position where, I mean, Nemesis is still good, but she's not as good as if I picked a different mage. And then they get away from that first round and then they ban out Nemesis right away. And then another pick-oriented jungler. This is really intelligent for Mashu Boys, not necessarily just about the, the opponent and doing their homework, but knowing that they're going up against a perhaps more skilled opponent, taking this individual play away from them. Interesting that Rival, despite having the ADC pick still open, decides to ban away two ADCs there with Artemis and Uller. So a little bit of a different strategy than what Mashu Boys has gone for, you were just touching on. They've been focusing on one role the entire time. They, they got their priority pick in the Robin to cover that role right. and then say, all right, now you've got to worry about what am I going to pick now that there's so many gods banned away. Rival, on the other hand, is saying, we're lowering the ADC pool here, but we feel confident that Vote's going to be able to find something that he still likes. But yeah. Sobek here for Mashu Boys, this is a great draft from them so far. I love the amount of CC they have. They've got enough damage right now as well. It's leaving open that ADC pick until last, so it is giving Vote hit whatever he decides to go for here. But I think Mashu Boys' first four picks are phenomenal. This is, now Mashu Boys, I think, do need a high damage hunter in the late game uh, if they want to really make this an A-plus draft. Love the Chiron selection here. It's going to cleanse out Athena, Agni, Sobek, a lot of nice stuff. And the Naja, it's going to allow Rival to do what Mashu Boys tried to keep them away from, which was the individual just hunt the kills type strategy. And uh, I, I love this pick. This is, oh man, what a, what a fun draft. Mashu Boys say, look, you're better than us. Don't kill us like it's a ranked game. And they ban all that stuff. And then Rival goes, look, we're better than you. We're going to ban out the easy hunters to play. We're, give us Chiron. How deep can you go? Hachi Man, not exactly that very deep. but uh, <laughs> No, but, but why? why? Why wouldn't you just pick the, the one right up floating on top? Exactly. Is the Hachi Man. Decent yeah. follow-up off of the Thenaton as well. Heavenly Banner does the job. They are better than most hunters. Plus that mounted archery. Uh, Mashu Boys has the meta five picks right now, basically, yep. just about every role. But at the same token, I completely agree with you. This Naja pick for Ice Ice Baby, just picture perfect. It can be that pick composition sort of jungler. It sets up perfectly for Wolfie mm -hmm. on that raw. It also has Prot Tread on that universe ring toss. Keep that in mind. That's important against that Sobek really that's likely going to the solo lane. You know, it's interesting. I don't think if, if there was not as many options for Chiron to cleanse, I think we actually see Hachi on rival and force Mashu to pick a, a, a deep hunter, an off-meta hunter. Sure. I think that was the game plan. But then halfway through, Rival go, wait a second. That cleanse, that Chiron is great stuff. Rival Mashu boys, coming out game number one. Let's start it with the casters. Thanks so much, Tom and Agro and Yemi and Tolly. We'll be bringing you the game one of today. I really like the draft from Mashu boys here, Tolly. They did a great job yeah. here, honestly, synergizing their support and the mid laner. Athena and Agni, this is the best kind of wombo combo you can really expect in team fights. They can either set up for each other or just wait for a team fight to break out. Bombs over the wall. You got Blink potentially on the Athena. We'll see. We'll see how this works out. You guys get to vote in chat on who you think will win. But already, the players are loaded in. The pings are going down. It's time to get on with game one of Masters here in Atlanta or Georgia. Close to Atlanta. You know, so right. we have some sea spice in the air, you know? It's not just spring that's in the air. We can actually smell some of mm. this spice coming through. And I think that's why Rival actually elected to play a little safe with their picks to start off. The Raw and the Geb, super safe late game. So even if they do struggle early, they have those defensive mechanics to fall back onto. Totally, they don't want to give anything away even for the rest of the tournament. They're expected to roll over Mashu boys here. But also, they've picked very safe things, very situational things. 12% think Mashu boys are going to win. Go on, SEA. I mean... That's more than I probably would have thought. I've seen, S I've seen SK and Splice get lower numbers than that. That's true. I'm just saying. 
But, uh, yeah, well, the thing is, a lot of the viewers at home don't really get a chance to watch all of the games here from behind the scenes of Masha Boy's mm -hmm. rival. Some of them stream consistently, so they'll see Deathwalker, they'll see Wolfie. They kind of understand their play styles here. And I'm really excited to see rival uh, Ice Eyes Baby specifically on this Naja. I was getting a chance to talk with him behind the scenes, and I was like, so what are your intentions here against Masha Boys? And he was like, you know, play Mechanical Gods as warm-up. Warm so I up. thought Susano, I thought the Thor, but Naja, another great mechanical warm-up god. Same with Rara as well, I would say. You know, just because of the snipes and the ability to make sure you land the same in pain over and over again. Important to warm yourself up, get yourself used to the new land environment you're going to be playing in this week. Callus in the dual lane alongside Vote playing the Chiron here. The Chiron, something we've not seen, well, we've seen now and again, totally, but... Clearly been picked up for a bit of the cleanse, I would say, just to allow a bit more survivability against these taunts. When Athena dashes, it's very telegraphed. So that's sure. basically going to be the trigger to allow Vote to drop that cleanse and make sure that in case he finds a double taunt onto both Callus and whoever else, that they don't oh, need just the Geb shield. Oh, blue buff stolen away by Rival, and now they both hit level two. I, I see all his no. I, I, I back to base. Blue buff down, Rival off to a great start. AS, you're going down here in that first blue Blood going to Ice Ice Baby in Season 5 where junglers reign supreme and control the early tempo of the game. There's no other better position to give the first blood to. Great little start for Rival then. And honestly, Mashu Boy's composition, totally. We mentioned it a little bit, but it's a lot of pressure onto I Rampage and Kameru here on this roster. They are the damage dealers to an extent. The rest are generally there for all setup. Obviously, Seol in the jungle on the Raven will do good work, but a lot of pressure on Kameru, I would say, considering he is a substitute here today. That's true, but playing the Hachiman, he's very safe. That mounted archery covers so much distance. I'm not really worried about him in the laning phase. I'm more worried about how he'll handle the aggression from Ice Ice Baby once he hits level 12 on the Naja. He's going to be able to have that blink and really start finding that backline targets. Now Manishima on the left-hand side playing the Athena, playing relatively safe here, but those rotations early means that Kameru will get a bit more farm on his own, but it puts Athena a little bit behind, and you would like it to hit level 5, as she dashes in, looking for the damage more than anything else to help clear the wave. Now she's oh, a reach, oh. but in with the charge goes Vo, looking for the knockback at first. Change his mind, however. Continue farming. Do rival. Didn't want to continue the aggression considering Vote had the minion aggro. It wasn't Callus taking the shots of the melee minions and the archers. As a result, he actually canceled it. He could have continued on and looked for the knockback, but play it safe rather than sorry. Something you're not going to see too often at the moment. Callus taking blink at level one. It's great on Geb. It's the first relic. Obviously, it's good on Geb, but you want that sprint totally most of the time. That's true. This is confidence, I'd say, from Rival, seeing this blink relic picked up at the start. And there's a lot of things you could do with this blink. If the Athena's going to try to go on you with a dash taunt, well, during the dash, you could just straight up blink past her and go on the enemy team in the back line. And with the range from Wolfie on the raw specifically, that's going to be the kill potential. Deathwalker may know. Sobek's on the way. Robin's here too, but Robin only at level two here. He's trying to put a bit of a beat down on the level four Deathwalker, but his rage yep. is there, Tolly. And the anger from Deathwalker has arrived. Oh, and Seol no. has made the worst mistake he could possibly do at level two, trying to take on a Kukulin with his passive. He didn't have the overhead kick, only sitting at level two, didn't level that up. And as a result, a clean kill. Deathwalker was invading with a calculated mindset of like, okay, even if I get ganked here, even if Sobek comes, I'm going to use my ability and basic attacks to continue the rage, get over that 85 threshold, get that second set of abilities, and worst case scenario, I don't get the blue. And Best case scenario, I get the blue and I kill someone. And with that, Seol, Raven in the jungle, only level three right now. That's a big difference compared to Ice Ice Baby, two levels ahead now. The level five is very important for every single character in the game. It gives you that ultimate. Momentum so important for junglers here, and a Naja that's ahead is gonna stay ahead. Raven from the jungle doesn't also always necessarily need the levels, but you can't start feeding the enemy jungler here, and that's where the damage disparity is gonna come from. Raven can still isolate targets, especially with the blink on ASU, but the question is, can he avoid some of this invade from Deathwalker? If you're going to lose buffs on the right side, you need to get something here on the left, but it doesn't seem that they're playing confidently on that side to apply the pressure. Yeah, so I think that's going to be the case now, is to abandon the right-hand side from Mashu Boys. Deathwalker's now going to lead against the Sobek, and Sobek, he's there to just farm and try and keep his tower alive, but as you look at the tower, 
It's already below half health at four minutes in. That's true, and that's the pros and cons of a Sobek. Great late game in terms of controlling team fights. Very poor early game in terms of controlling the laning phase and making sure you don't lose your own blue buff. And as a result of ASU going down early, that was easy cleanup. Oh, Minishima just off the mark with a taunt, and instead he's going to get all in. The dash is down, the chase is on. Going to have to use the snipes, though, vote to pick up the kill, but nicely done. Kill for the dual lane of Rival. Only needed two shots to confirm that one. The dash taunt without a gank coming around the corner. If he just waited 20 seconds for both Rampage and ASU to come through, this would have been a four on two and Masha Boys would be on the board. Well, there is a gank on the left hand side. The cavalry charge was available for both. Sorry, I should say the charge just to get away back to safety. They're not back. And now Wolfie you thinking about a rotation here. Has his ultimate available, but Mashu Boy is well aware the rotation could be coming through, so we'll back away. Very clean performance thus far from Rival. Really respecting the gank there. They still held their distance. Despite finding the kill, they listened to the communications. It's like, hey, listen, we don't see the mid. We don't see the jungler. So great respect here from Voting Callus, despite finding the kill on Minishima. So, so far, so good. Rival have just basically gone into the jungle and looked to fight from moment one, the very first kill of the game came as Ice Ice Baby hit level two off the blue buff. And then following that, Death Walker picks up a kill. Now the dual lane. Only Wolfie to really make an impact so far, but I'm sure he will play in that role. It's very true. Wolfie and Vo Callus are playing more defensive and waiting for opportunities, whereas the combination of Death Walker and Ice Ice Baby between Kakulin and Naja, two aggressive early game gods that you want to kind of get rolling from the very get-go. And that's something that Rival have been doing successfully this game. It's not really known for their style, though, because their style online in Season 5 has been, like, dragging you through the mud, sure. getting these small objectives here and there, making the games last 35-plus minutes. Oh, Kallus tried to make a play there with a the Blink ultimate, but didn't manage to find it. Kamaru just out of range, positioned safe enough. Very important. Now there's a bit of a window for Mashu boys with that Geb ultimate not being available to maybe look to pressure the dual lane a little bit. And the Blink as well, so Kallus only going to be relying on the knockup and the shields to peel for his backline. Deathwalker oh, and Ice Ice Baby really controlling the right side of the map. And already the overhead kick used by wow. Robin, and that means he should die, but the bombs come down from Rampage, and it's Ice Ice Baby on the run! Southeast Asia get on the board, finally! However, is he all sticking around, and he's going to be so careful! Oh, it's Rampage, that's one hit from death, but he's still alive! The damage mitigation here, Wolfie is off the mark now. The speed buff was stolen successfully, but losing the life of Ice Ice Baby puts Masha Boys on the board. Still struggling a little bit in the gold department here, here, but shutting down the momentum here is key. Not allowing Ice Ice Baby to get to that level 12 marker before ASU. Most important thing there was Rampage getting that kill too. We mentioned Mashu Boy's composition here. They're going to be relying on the Agni, relying on the Hachiman for all the damage in this game. So getting him those that extra gold is very important, allowing him to just continue to pressure and him living even oh, more so. That was simply because of that Defender of Olympus, that damage mitigation here. It was like about 5% health on Rampage before he ducked under his tower. Definitely thinking his lucky stars for that one here. Working on Warlock staff now, both of these mid mages, but going for a different style of boots. Rampage wanting to get those cooldown reductions, whereas Wolfie wants the pen. Robin in the jungle sees three. He's going to go aggressive on his own, punching down the Geb as the red buff is stolen away. Rampage not going to be able to drop a bomb down in time to secure that. So that goes over to Wolfie. And now Rival, after taking the right hand side of the jungle, they're going to focus on the left and get Kamaru's ultimate. Oh, but Ice Ice Baby's going to get taunted in. Takes one in the sky for now. Votes waiting underneath here. He's getting a couple shots off, but still holding on to the ultimate. A little bit aggressive this from Rival, but Vote will get a kill. And Ice Ice Baby gets the other one. Does he Manages have the mana? with the ring toss. Vote wants this kill. There you go. Ultimate comes into play, but he can't find the snipe. Oh! He can with the last one. Double for Vote. Third time's the charm here. Barely able to dash away from the knockup and the searing paint. Now it's Callus that's in a lot of trouble oh. after getting plucked back in. Little bit greedy from Rival. They're trying to turn the, the heel up a little bit more there. You saw the comp, the idea from Callus blinking, find the knockup, and Wolfie was sniping straight away. He trusted his teammate to get it. His teammate didn't manage to find it, however. So it gives Mashu boys another kill. Six to two at only nine minutes in, and it's kind of what you expected. I see, yeah, you're definitely a fighting team, that's for sure. That's very true here, and something that Kalos probably could have cleaned up was maybe use his ultimate instead of the knockup immediately here, because there is a small window where your knockup might get kind of juked out there by some of the dashes oh, here. They were, they were baiting so hard for Bill to go in for that pluck. 
And the moment he did, Wolfie beads in his face. Look at the little cheeky grin on Wolfie's face in the bottom left-hand corner. You saw he... That was the game plan the whole time. That's just textbook play right there. Just bait out the dash or the escape here, trying to kind of... Dangle himself out like a juicy piece of meat, but instead, it was, so obvious, though. It was the croc that got turned into the meat instead. It was so obvious where it's like, why are you lining up right in front of my tower like this? You still have to go for the block. In my opinion, you still got to try and do it and see if he can times his beads wrong, because he'll die. I mean, if you have backup, yes. If you don't, then how are you going to survive? It's, it's a true. level 11 raw. You're a level 8 Sobic without really magic defense here. You only have 15 here from the Warrior's Blessing, still working on what probably is going to be that breastplate of Valor for the cooldowns. So without any health, realistically, that Ross is going to blow you up. Stack of items are now online for a couple of members of Rival and for the Mashu boys. Devour's Gauntlets for Kamiru on the Hachi Man, but Transcendence, as you'd expect, for the Chiron, played by Vote here. As well, in the mid lane, Rampage hasn't got his Warlock Staff online just yet, but we do have one online on the left-hand side. Kamiru, though, up for a wild ride, and on landing, Vote will secure the kill as the giggle comes through. Just clean and easy. They forced out his beads earlier on, still on cooldown for another 20 seconds, and they really recognize those cooldowns. As soon as you force the beads, you write down the timer there, you call it out for your teammates, and you find another one. This is some confidence here from Rival. The Oracles are actually mashy boys, but they couldn't even get in there to try and contest the Gold Fury. Tier 1 tower already down on the right. The middle one's dead any second. Death was going to take on the army because he's got Kallus right behind. And it's going to be a four on two for now. Here comes a long distance artillery shots. The masterful shot going to slow down Bill to allow Wolfie to clean up. And the tier 1 tower does fall. Speed buff spawns and Ice Ice Baby takes this away. Rival made it to the World Championship Finals in the last land they were here. And now they're looking like they're back to the best. Wow. Only 11 minute fire giant. This is okay. probably the earliest fire giant in the SPL in season five. If, I'm if not they mistaken. get it. Yes. Oh no, in season five as well. And there was one once upon a time that was done dead on 10 minutes, but they accidentally messed that one up. I believe that was actually, uh, denial. Was that? I think it was oh, denial, yeah. 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 So fire giant round the waist of rival. It's not a, an upgraded fire giant now. As that one spawns a little bit later on in the game, but Rival with a big swing, you can see the gold is monumental already. It's 9,000 and 11,000 experience. That's 1,000 experience extra per minute That's for madness. Rival. That's actually insane here. This is looking like kind of my rank games where I'm losing, so we're going to wipe the sweat off my forehead from that one. But great calls all across the board here with so much map control from Rival between getting the gold fury into getting the tier one mid tower, having the vision around the fire giant, above the mid harpies, next to the blue buff, allows them to go for that confident play. And hey, worst come to worst, they just reset it and run, run away. I can't believe like the supports haven't even finished their first item after Boots yet. Oh, I say that as Kalis just goes back to base and buys a full item. But I digress. I mean, seeing seeing the, a fire giant around your waist when you've only got one item completed is insane. Rival are going for, Rival are going to go for the throat here. Emperor's armor this early on means that okay, tower pushing time here, and without too much uh, physical defense and health, this is probably the greatest instant buy considering that he was on the path towards Shove. Gauntlet of Thebes. So sovereignty would have been good, but Emperor's Armor is going to allow these tier 2 towers to fall that much easier. Well now Rival have full control of the map. They have the Fire Giant around their waist. The question is, is which lane do they push? It looks like they're going to pay attention to the left hand side and that means Kamiru's left oh, on his no. own. The rest of Mashu Boy is not around and Kamiru's going to find some fans. Not the type he really wants to deal with. Going to use his ultimate there. Gets the Athena ult too. That's wasted and under the tower. Now they're trapped in a 2 burn. This is five. I should say four because oh, Vote no. wasn't even there. The worst thing that could have happened is actually allowing the Athena ultimate to go through because now you got multiple ring bounces as well. At that point, Kamir should have just committed to the mounted archery and run away. Try to hope that they wouldn't kill him while he was on the horse. Yeah, I probably would have gone for the runaway back to the tier two. But in the end, Rival got two kills and two towers. Now they're looking at the first Phoenix. Robin's still in the mid lane wow. here as this is going on and into the sky, the snipe on landing. You mentioned it, Rival would be looking at this as a warm-up game for mechanics and making sure they're on point. And Naja into Raw Snipe, that's a good little tester. Very clean performance also, like picture frame perfect. I don't think there was any downtime uh, between landing where Wolfie's Snipe didn't connect there. So great performance here from Rival. 14 minutes in, getting a left side Phoenix here, now going for another tier two tower, extending their goal lead to about 15,000 gold after this one. Now we did get to speak to Mashu boys before you saw the interview with a couple of the lads talking about this is a good test for them to see where they stand up. You know, they're going to bring some Southeast Asia jank. I think they will do that more in game two. Sure. After how this one's looked. But it's good to see that they came with a game plan. Their picks and bands seem pretty solid. 
It's what they do on the map that needs to improve going into game two and throughout the year. I think that they're going to need to change their solo lane pick and not allow Deathwalker and Ice Ice Baby that kind of control. Oh. The bait yet again here. But, but it cost him both his relics. Manishima will go down as will Bill. Callus got a kill and Vote gets another one. Centaurus used there by Vote to get some damage on Rampage and that'll be enough for Deathwalker to clean that one up. One Phoenix already down, second one due to fall. Could we be over before 16 minutes? This is going to be the quickest Season 5 game probably in all of history. Rival going to go for the throw right here. It looks like this could be over indeed. And back to the drawing board go Mashu boys. After a nice easy start for Rival. It started at minute 2 with the invade in the jungle of the blue buff. And it ends with Manishima falling as does the Titan. 17 to 2, 15 minutes and 12 seconds. Rival are putting on a clinic here in game number one. I'm really worried for Masha Boys in game number two if they don't switch up their solo slash jungle side area. They cannot allow ASU to get behind that early on, especially against the gods such as Naja that just thrives off of those leads. Now Masha Boys back to the drawing board. You can see them all having a little conversation there amongst themselves about what they're going to do next. Obviously, if they do lose this set totally, they're not completely out of the tournament just yet because they do have the opportunity to play again in the loser's bracket. That's true. In that lower bracket, you're going to be able to fight through a lot of teams there, but it's going to be a long journey. Both of these teams not wanting to go through that journey. They want the quickest route there, and that's definitely what's probably going to be on Rival's mind here. It's like, all right, let's kind of sweep the dust off here and move forward. And that will be that. It's very interesting to see how game one broke down between the two. But who do you guys think was MVP for that game? Rival in general. I think it was Ice Ice I Rampage. Baby. He got kills. That's true. He did. A little bit of aggression here from Rival. Unwarranted. Great mm -hmm. defender of Olympus. Saving Rampage as well. But I think uh, out of all of Rival, it should be Ice Ice Baby. The momentum he had off of that first blood just carried them. Well, only 15 minutes of gameplay, but Tom and Agro are standing by to break down exactly what went on in game one. Well, not much went on. 15,000 gold lead, 14 minutes in the game. Dominance defined. Rival looking like the team that wound up second at Worlds. Surprise, surprise. This is kind of what we <laughs> expected from Team Rival. Maybe not quite that good. I was expecting 19, 20 minutes, and then us getting on the desk going, wow, that was real fast. I yeah. can't believe they ended that fast. 11-minute Fire Giant, 15, 12 on the clock whenever they end. I I insanity. And that was just good pressure around the map by Ice Ice Baby. I, I agree with what Tolly was saying there. He looked really, really good towards the uh, towards the entirety of that game. Finds the early first blood onto ASU on that right-hand side. Deathwalker then finds a 2v1 against ASU on that right-hand side. And once those two kills happened early, yeah. I think all of us were just like, here we go. Well, Ice Ice Baby is going to earn your most valuable player of game number one. No surprise there. And it goes directly into what Masha boys were kind of expecting here. They ban out three pick-oriented junglers and then a Giannis, which enables those pick-oriented junglers. And then the final one, Naja, is actually selected there. Ice Ice Baby comes out on top with it, just running the game on the Lotus Prince. Really impressive stuff. And I love this Naja selection for two reasons. Number one, as you mentioned, it, it goes to what Rival seemed to want to do and what Mastery Boys wanted to keep Rival off of. Right. But at the same time, Naja is a rhythm god, is a god that is not particularly easy. It's one that we see even the highest level of players mess up on execution at times, oh, yeah. even on land. So for your first land game to just you know, dip your feet in, get warm, make sure you are, are comfortable in this environment and that kind of stuff. Naja is one of the best ones that you could do it on. And the same could be said for, for Raw, for Wolfie. Yeah. Just getting that timing down, making sure that everything feels nice and fluid. Having a combo set up like that, as well as just the ability to win the game without that one-two combo of, of Raw and Naja, uh, I think those are perfect picks, not only for what Rival is good at, what their team composition wanted to do, what Masha Boys didn't want to have happen to them, but also just for... I want to be comfortable at land. They hit all three of those points. Masha Boy is a little bit more serious here, and I want to take a look one more time at the bracket. Hindu Man had mentioned it. And, uh, we're actually doing a double elimination bracket here at Smite Masters. So, of course, you have your your top that we took a look at earlier, and then this is the, the lower round, the, the bottom bracket. So should you lose in these first rounds, then you wind up here in the lower round. So we'll see uh, 
a little bit later, lower round one, which is what we're watching now, take on lower round two. So you do have a second chance to really come back and fight into this one. Really exciting. One of the first times that we've done uh, the double elim in a long time. Yeah, and it's going to mean that you don't have to worry if your favorite team ends up, you know, stumbling against, mm -hmm. you know, rival United is a quarterfinals matchup. But whoever loses doesn't immediately just pack it up and, and get ready to go home. They get another opportunity to fight through and, and try and find the team to beat them at the end of the road. And so the